41 seconds of logos. Also Nickelodeon. We are gathered here today to immortalize in song. Owl's position. An untimely death of a great legend. For me, the only thing worse than giving away the ending of your movie is lying about giving away the ending of your movie. I'll be watching you, you alley bastards, and the number of sins I award at the end of this video will be directly proportional to how thick you lay on the Rango is gonna die business should you not eventually deliver it. I will not tolerate movies about talking reptiles lying to me about reality. Holy sh**, is this Barbie's first nude scene? Wait, no, no, can't see your face. Probably a body double. Meanwhile, the wicked Malvolio plots his ascension to the throne, <laughs> while her aging father lies gravely ill. I didn't think it would be possible to put Johnny Depp in a worse plot than Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, but here we are. Unhand her, you jailers of virtue, or taste the bitter sting of my vengeance. Hang on, you just said that was the unwell grandfather. Why is he getting the sting of his vengeance? And if you desire romance, I will become the greatest lover the world has ever known! Hard pass. I already saw Don Juan DeMarco and that shit sucked. Oh, stop it. No, really. Well, you must. This appears to be a very specific type of masturbation, and I highly recommend you don't research it any further. I guess these assholes are moving to some new place, but I'd just like to point out that they cataloged a bunch of albums and labeled one section exotic percussion, and that is some serious dedication to being a hipster. It's kind of f***ed up that Rango's parents drove off without him when so much sh clearly fell out of their car during that almost crash. Anybody who's anal enough to label sections for their albums and has a huge collection of exotic percussion can't possibly be this oblivious when their possessions fly through the back windshield. I need a little help here. Uh, are, are you okay? Amazing that this highway that nearly had a multi-car collision just a minute ago is now completely empty so that two animals can have a casual conversation. Also, I know, I know, it's a cartoon, but this whole thing opened up with the singing owls saying that Rango was gonna die. And how am I supposed to fear death in this universe if Alfred Armelina Dillo survives an injury like this? This is my quest. He waits for me. Armadillo plays the pronoun game, so that Rango has to ask who the hell he is. There's another one! Well, it's like I've always said. You can't spell fear and loathing in Las Vegas without Rango. Sure, that's a random adage I've shoehorned into everyday conversations for years. But it's no more shoehorned than this double depping. At noon, the townspeople gather for a mysterious ritual. Oh, what, uh, a town? You mean, like, with real people? Rango knows he's a tiny chameleon, right? So why would a town of people excite him? Will they not be surprised by a talking chameleon in a floral shirt? And if they're not, and sentient chameleons are the norm, why is everyone okay with keeping them in glass boxes? A day's journey. Follow your shadow. This is absolutely terrible advice. Terrible advice that Rango decides to follow, and then immediately not follow at the same time, but still somehow make it to his destination regardless. So, yay? Animals have had millions of years to adapt to the harsh environment. But the lizard? He's going to die. You're an omniscient narrator filling in the gaps that can also be seen and heard by the person whose story you're telling? I don't even think Deadpool could tell you what kind of f***ing wall break that is. How is this f***ing shirt changing color as well? Deus Ex Mach Canada? So wait, yeah, I get it. Rango stepped on a twig and gave away his location, but how does that change the fact that the hawk still has a can on its head? Wouldn't that still be the hawk's main concern? I was gonna give Rango a pass since it's tricky to avoid an aerial assault no matter where you run, but now that the hawk is effectively blind, there's really no need for him to demonstrate his credentials from the Prometheus school of running away from things quite so flagrantly. I'll kill you, you stupid lizard! Desert Smart Toad thinks Rango did this shit on purpose, or somehow fell from the sky recklessly. Imagine running for your life from a hawk, and yet your instincts tell you instead to laugh at the schadenfreude. You son of a... Oh, f off, I hear that generic bird scream in so many movies I'm amazed we're not calling it the Will Hawk Squawk. Also, bleeping swears. Instead of evaporating all at once, these puddles pull an infinity war and dissipate with outstanding dramatic timing just as Rango arrives at them. I'm still not entirely sure if Rango is dreaming the story or dead or both, but it's kind of crazy that weapons manufacturers started making shotguns for iguanas. Our town is drying up. We're in the middle of a drought, now someone has dumped water in the desert. Aw, this movie thinks it's Chinatown. A monkey got a cracker, his mother was a slapper, she'll be coming round the mountain in the rain! I didn't think it would be possible to give Johnny Depp worse musical numbers to sing than Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, but here we are. You carry his remains? No, he's ashes. He loved to smoke. So apparently you carry around this jar full of cigarette ashes just for the jokes, then. Setting up your ex positional mariachi band on a f***ing cactus. I'm officially confused about the inhabitants of this universe. We know that humans exist and that they keep animals as pets. So what the hell do those same humans think when they come across this tiny miniature village impersonating the Wild West? And how do the random desert animals even know how to impersonate the Wild West? That's a funny looking shirt. It's a funny looking dress. You got funny looking eyes. These two keep at this for some time, as if everyone involved knew this was the only way the word funny would ever be associated with this movie. Cactus juice. 
that's what we got. Would it really be beyond the realms of good customer service, even in the Wild West, to put this in a different container or remove the spikes or at least not propel it at dangerous speeds? Hell, I seen things make a grown man lose control of his glandular functions. Glandular functions should have outed Rango as a nerd, but doesn't. Beans, I need to sh show you something. Mary Mac is about to show Beans that the bank has almost run out of water, something he seems to want to keep secret. If that's the case, why is the vault door hiding this secret made of transparent glass? Why would any safe door be transparent for that matter? Water in the desert! <laughs> Was this during one of your... Special times. Even though it's clear what the banker means by this, I can't help but think this is a period joke. Bullet hits the shovel, ricochets back towards number three, and that's when the roof caved in. I didn't think this movie would be able to place Johnny Depp at the center of a murder less believable than the ones committed in Sweeney Todd, but here we are. You don't pay the mortgage, you don't own the land! Why did Bad Bill bring this former landowner to the bar to punish him and yell at him? Is it because the movie needed the protagonist to run into him before the first act was over? Because I believe it is. You know who that is, Bill? That there's Wrangle. Yeah, yeah, he ain't afraid of you. He ain't afraid of none of you. Why do I get the sense that this is going to be a Three Amigos slash Bugs Life situation soon? Yet another actor comes to town, fools everyone into thinking he's good at fighting and can defeat the big bad scenario. And when you see me coming, stand aside. Bizarrely, I can only assume the murder bird is in on the gag, because why else would he allow Rango to go on for all this sometime before following his murdery instincts? The hawk sliced across this makeshift porta potty, but somehow managed to completely miss the makeshift toilet roll holder. <laughs> Letting a hat rule your life. Also, because this asshole has to have his hat, he creates a distraction that allows Rango to get away. A completely out of nowhere break that neither Rango nor the movie itself earns. The bird of prey decides to give chase on foot. How the f did Rango go inside the vending machine and get inside this box so quickly? It took a grand total of five seconds from the moment Rango ran towards it to the point when the hawk crashed through the building. Also, choosing licorice for your hiding place. Also, also, why not pick the many different boxes that don't have a see-through opening? Movie now thinks Rango had time to bust out of the box and create a laundry rope of licorice to climb out of and down the vending machine, which raises the question, how the f*** did he even get in the machine in the first place if he needs tied up licorice ropes to get down? And how many Twizzlers were in that pack? And how did he manage to tie them all together so quickly? Fortunately for Rango, this highly intelligent hawk who managed to operate a f***ing vending machine a few minutes ago decides to just stand there like it's his f***ing job as this very heavy yet slow moving tower falls and crushes him. Look at them. So desperate to live, they'll follow it anywhere. Character who's going to be the surprise villain says obvious villain sh as soon as they meet with the protagonist that goes completely unnoticed. Cliche. Also, coming straight off his performance just a few months prior as Lotso in Toy Story 3, where his character walked around with a cane, Ned Beatty basically owned the cartoon villain with a disability market back in these days. Pardon. The mayor doesn't hear this bottle crash, or doesn't care. But either way, you'd think there would be some reaction to this. Do you know how they make it through each and every day? They believe it's going to be better. Cubs fans! Wait, but seriously though, how is there a Bible that is this small for tiny animals to read? The movie somewhat inconsistently has shown us that this town is made of stuff humans have discarded, like a Pepto-Bismol outhouse, and the post office made out of a mailbox, and yet there are some items in this world that are manufactured to scale, so I'm kind of confused about how this place works. The director said, let's have Beans eat an impossibly small apple that shouldn't exist. It'll make her look like even more of an asshole. What exactly happened to the... Movie almost rips off the red hour from Star Trek TOS, which gives me a small glimmer of hope that there's a Trek fan behind this movie. Maybe we'll be treated to a big bad that's a supercomputer manifesting itself as a floating head that can be beaten with a clever riddle or some sh And this tombstone does nothing to dissuade me of that. Acolytes, prepare the holy spigot! Holy sh**, a giant faucet that drops water on the town, a leader of the town in a wheelchair who has a bunch of mindless followers. Here's a retroactive sin for Mad Max Fury Road stealing that sh**, even though it turns out the faucet only drops mud here in a second. The idea was there. And holy sh**, there's even a scene where the moles chase after Rango with a guy playing a banjo. It's his fault! It's the newcomer! Burn him! I guess the town of Dirt was founded on Wicker Man principles. Oh, my God. Now, I'm no Margot Robbie in a bathtub, but let me get this straight. The government, such as it is, gives out water to the people to use as they wish. The people then store any water that they don't use straight away in one building so that they can withdraw it when they do need it. But this movie expects me to believe that the man in charge of this, let's call it a water bank, has the ability to give out other people's water as credit, which results in a big short that prevents people from removing their water that they left there for safekeeping. And to top it off, the root of said water supply is controlled by one wealthy person who also makes all the rules and laws. What kind of fucked up culture would allow that? As long as we've got water, we've got ourselves a town. Rango promises to guard the remaining water, but doesn't have any solutions for how they'll survive after five days once the water runs out. 
Somehow, this keeps the entire town from its wonderful life in the remaining water. George Bailey spent all his honeymoon money to keep the customers happy. This guy's got absolutely nothing, and it somehow works. These assholes do the whole Bugs Bunny. I knew I should have made the left turn at Albuquerque. Bullshit. Right in the middle of the goddamn street. During hours, people are still awake. And while Rango is oblivious to what these criminals are going to do and even helps them out, it still gives him a lead after the bank is robbed. And yes, I'm not saying these guys are supposed to be smart, but they clearly have a ringleader who does have some intelligence. So why are they just guessing when it comes to doing this Raising Arizona nonsense? Seems like it would have been easy to map all this out before making random guesses and risking exposure. Here in the town of dirt, we happen to have the finest financial institution this side of the Missouri. Balthazar is a blindfolded mole who had to ask his sons if Rango looked as stupid as he sounds, yet he knows exactly where Rango is pointing. Considering how small we know Rango is, how f***ing small would this cucumber need to be to cover his tiny eye holes? Now as my deputy, you'll be in charge of all tracking and finding of villains, utilizing your well-developed ingenuity. No offense taken. Quite honestly, if it wasn't for the movie's subtitles, I would never have gotten that Rango was making a somewhat racist pun here, but at least it's not as offensive as the entirety of the Lone Ranger. I say we track this pipe back to its hydraulic origin and apprehend the culprits behind this aquatic conundrum. Did this asshole Rango buy unused dialogue from George Clooney and Old Brother Where Art Thou, or am I just hearing things? This giant eye doesn't seem to worry anybody, and whatever it's attached to doesn't immediately eat anyone, so why the f*** are we spending any time on it? You're gonna wanna see this! You need to come take a look at this cliché. It's Mr. Merrimack from the bank. Nobody, even the smart ones, asked where the hell this guy was when it was discovered the bank had been robbed. This man wasn't shot. He was drowned. Drown in the middle of the desert? I didn't think this movie would be able to put Johnny Depp in a murder mystery worse than Death on the Nile, but here we- Shh, Depp was in the other one, wasn't he? Damn it! Quite like Murder on the Orient Express. Well, f Death on the Nile anyway. That means we're riding now! This moment. Riding on f***ing what? And sure, in the next scene we see they're riding on ostriches or some sh Like there was a group of them nearby. What are you going to do about Rattlesnake Jake? Why does this movie need yet another f***ing villain? Yep, there's a belly button. Isn't Rango a lizard? You ever get lonely? Skip! Sure, sure, this is just a light peck on the cheek, but goddamn, that's f***ed up. And she's cool with it? Choleric farm. That's gingivitis. We ain't. Happy about that water. There's something I got to hush, do. Hush, hush up now. Somebody's coming. Eight minutes. For a second, I thought about just leaving the sin that way. I'd say eight minutes, and you'd have to figure out what I meant for eternity. It would be like Gary Larson's Far Side cartoon, Cow Tools, but I've wasted enough time. The moles don't tell their dad that the water bottle they stole doesn't have any water in it, and that wastes eight minutes of movie time. Sure, we get an army of moles riding on top of bats shooting Gatlin guns at Rango while Ride of the Valkyries plays, but believe me, it's a lot cooler in your head than... <laughs> I can't even finish that sentence. Reach for the... Uh, line... REACH FOR THE SKY! How is going through this play bullshit any better than just turning up with guns? It's not like they were spotted approaching. In fact, why the f didn't they just keep the high ground? You and your entire family get your hands up where I can see them. <laughs> My entire family? How the f did all these moles know to wait until they got a cue like this to rise up from the ground? If Rango doesn't say entire family, how would they know when they're needed? You got Hans f***ing Zimmer and wasted his time by including Ride of the Valkyries. Sure, it's epic as f***. You don't hire Gordon Ramsay and get him to make you mac and cheese. And yes, I'm aware that I'm going to hell for comparing Ride of the Valkyries to mac and cheese, but the point stands. It's almost a shame that the only thing separating this movie from a hard R rating is this flying wombat thing having worse aim than a stormtrooper with a helmet full of pudding fighting in a blizzard without a gun while on acid at night. Jedi, it's time for the Alabama squeeze box. Last time I saw an Alabama squeeze box attempted, it did not end well for anyone involved and my college girlfriend banned me from any future family funerals. Why? What good is it having a whole army of moles riding bats if you're just gonna send one or two down to do a single job? Also, I hesitate to bring this up, but the movie has forced my hand. This sh is way too much like that wagon chase in the same year's Puss in Boots. This movie was first by a long shot, but f you for not foreseeing the similarities. Balthazar told them not to hit the water with their gunfire, but apparently throwing dynamite near it is totally okay. That wasn't altogether unpleasant! Did the mole rat type thing just insinuate that he enjoyed being teabagged by a chameleon? Are we certain this is a kid's movie? <laughs> Does anyone in fact eat lead? Who knows? The movie doesn't seem to know either. Also, when the action gets like this where it cuts to all this random bullshit, how are we supposed to follow it? Is anyone winning? I don't know. Is this the longest ravine in the history of the world? Probably. All I know is that animators worked very hard to create scenes that likely took them months to finish that would flash before your eyes in the most cynical fashion possible. Yeah!
The amount of dumb fucking luck that saves their fucking lives in this fucking set piece alone is fucking infuriating. First, we have the accidental gunshot that startles the boar carrying a wagon of water, which facilitates an escape they absolutely didn't plan. Then we have Rango randomly landing on a bat carrying a stick of dynamite that he haphazardly drops in the perfect position to collapse this rock formation, saving their asses. All to be finished off by this dickhead rock that topples the cart, injuring no one, but revealing that the jug is empty and there's apparently no reason to be fighting in the first place. That's the same villain would give us a prospecting permit. A what? <clears throat> Irrelevant. And we shall never speak of this again, despite it exposing the sheriff as either an incompetent criminal or criminally incompetent. We don't tunnel into that vault, but there weren't nothing in it. How the f*** did Balthazar not know about the water before now? He came with them on the heist, right? I found it in the desert. The wine tarnation that you bring in here! Harry Dean Stanton would have been amazing at Cinema Sense. Anyway, we know the real reason why his son brought the jug here. The plot! What are you building out here? The future, Mr. Rango. The future. F this movie went from being not so subtle about being an animated Chinatown to straight up smearing it in our faces. We're civilized now. That's right. Civilized. <laughs> Somehow no one caught on or thought it was suspicious that the mayor is hanging out and golfing with a gunslinger called Bad Bill. I mean, the golfing should have been the first red flag. Holy f***ing sh**. Disco Lovejoy. Hello, brother. Thirsty. Look upon this scene like I do. It's a reprise of Captain Jack Sparrow and Davy Jones from Dead Man's Chest. It doesn't make it better, but you can amuse friends and yourself with your movie knowledge. Listen close, you pathetic fraud. I understand why the mayor asked Rattlesnake Jake to come down here. He needed him to humiliate Rango in front of everyone so that they would know he was faking it the whole time and they wouldn't have anyone to believe in. But I don't understand why he didn't just take the opportunity with the stolen water to fire Rango. I mean, he's already got all the water now. The town can't live without it and is a failure. So. What good does this humiliation really do? Also, why doesn't he have Rango killed? He had Merrimack killed, so we know he's not above it. And Rango will have a significantly harder time with his third act redemption cliche if he's dead. Holy sh! the f***ing moon in Moonfall didn't take up this much sky, and that sh literally touched the planet. I'm not sure what themes or ideas the movie is trying to share on any level, but I'm fairly certain there are better ways to communicate them than an extremely thin Frogger reference. The Jesus Lizard. Sometimes you gotta dig deep. Find what you're looking for. Okay, Timothy Oliphant does a scary Clint Eastwood here, so I'm gonna knock a sin off. But also, imagine casting Timothy Oliphant and then saying, hey, how good is your Eastwood impression? Is this heaven? If it were, we'd be eating Pop-Tarts with Kim Novak. The spirit of the West mispronounces off in such a way that it changes the meaning of the sentence. They used to call you the man with no name. Do you hear that in the back row? The lizard who lives in a cage has a working knowledge of spaghetti westerns. Did you understand that reference? They need some kind of hero. Then be a hero. I get what these movies are going for when they have ghostly mythical characters show up like this to help the protagonist. It's just, I'm so exhausted of these people who are built up for the entire movie, only to have them give advice like, be a hero, or the real power was inside you all along, or the woman you've been banging for a whole year is your cousin, but I'm pretty sure you already knew that. It's never anything constructive or profound or stops making them bang their cousins. It's just a bunch of words so that the protagonist can enter the third act with confidence because they got a vasectomy last week and they don't have to worry about pregnancy scares anymore. No man can walk out on his own story. Believing that any version of Clint Eastwood would disregard the rule of thirds so haphazardly. We each see what we need to see. Beautiful, isn't it? <sighs> they follow the water. They follow the water! Come on! If they follow the water, why have they been sitting in this barren desert for so long? While well, we all recover from the shocking reveal that Las Vegas exists, let's talk about the villain's plan. The mayor diverts all the water away from dirt and the neighboring area so that he can buy up the land super cheap and start work on a Vegas for ants. But why? We saw that Dirt's bank was filled with water instead of money, making that the chief currency, and he already has all of it. So why does he need to create Downsizing's Vegas at all? And what would they even be betting with in Las Vegas if water is the stuff you bet with and no one has any? I feel like these water-craving cacti have been almost dying just so they could wait for Rango to have his Spirit of the West vision and follow them to the mayor's dirty secret. Oh, f*** off. Did his sheriff's badge reveal itself just as he was walking by? So what do we call Rattlesnake Jake's weapon here? A uh, rattling gun? Also, with a gun like this, why was this dickhead afraid of the hawk again? If you have this kind of defense, couldn't you just shoot a hawk down? Another confusing animated movie where some animals are sentient and meant to be rooted for, while others, like this dragonfly, can just get f***ed for no discernible reason. Holy f***. 
man. Why wasn't this gun already cocked? Did you assholes really think that Rattlesnake wouldn't hear this shit in the dead quiet just before a duel? Why the fuck did they turn the water on only to use it like this? This is a massive waste of water, is it not? All the stuff that falls down on the ground is going to be unusable. Why not start with the bat riding moles for a distraction and leave the goddamn water alone? Take your miracle! I know they're all desperate for water, but biblically speaking, this is literally the opposite of a miracle. Also, how is a flood that does this much private and public property damage good for anyone? Rango is a fucking menace. I'm gonna blow so many holes in you, your guts will be like a lead. Rattlesnake Jake has been built up as the stone cold killer who gives zero fucks, but here he's just telling Rango what he's gonna do rather than just doing it, which buys Rango more time. Jake runs out of bullets and there are still a lot of mole bats in the air, and yet Jake continues to be on shot. Mama Mole said something to the effect of, <laughs> And I haven't seen one bullet whiz by this f***er. You came back. I didn't think we'd ever see Johnny Depp put in a worse love story than Romeo and Juliet 2 Sherlock Gnomes, but here we are. Rango does the Heimlich bullet maneuver on beans and somehow generates enough force to crack the glass, even the slightest bit. It's like the movie knows it's bullshit, but they figure since you're already accepting that this is a cartoon version of Chinatown with talking animals, they can just get away with punching physics right in its stupid face, like those two things are equivalent on the bullshit scale. Pretty soon, no one will believe you even existed. Okay, just make sure it happens off screen. We've managed to go this whole movie without traumatizing any kids and it'd be a shame to blow that now. Definitely cut that owl hanging part, right? He brought the water back. Just like you promised. You really are a hero. No, he fucking wasn't. Everything he's said from day one has been a lie, and all he's done is take advantage of the fact that the town is dumb enough to believe everything he says. But once again, none of that past shit matters as long as the most recent shit he did was positive. And although he's certain to die, perhaps from a household accident. I knew it! But here's one final fuck you to this lying owl and the false tension-inducing mariachi band of bullshit he flew in on. They're a very nosy fella. You know what happens to nosy fellows? They lose their noses. You can get a steak here, Daddy O. Don't be a. What, Ma? I'm Roadkill! We were somewhere around Barstow, on the edge of the desert, when the drugs began to take hold. What do you think, Doc? This hawk is dead. She's dead. Leave her alone, you vultures! Caught me on the worst day possible. The man I worked for has just started a re-election campaign. Now, we're gonna have to see each other tomorrow. I am your redeemer. It is by my hand you will rise from the ashes of this world. What's an aquifer? For pooping, silly. I think we've established that caca, caca, and tuki, tuki don't work. Suddenly, there was a terrible roar all around us and the sky was full of what looked like huge bats, all swooping and screeching and diving around the car. And a voice was screaming, Holy, Holy Jesus, Jesus, where are these goddamn animals? animals? Many of these trees were my friends. They had voices of their own.